So have you ever seen this sign before? You may have seen it at a temple opening or just out on the street. The holder of this sign is our guest for the next couple of episodes here on the Ex-Mormon Files. So thanks for joining us and we hope uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Rob uh, Sabolka is our guest, and uh, we've known each other a long time, and I'm excited to have you come and share and tell us exactly about the sign and some of the other things in your life. So thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. And you're here in Salt Lake. West Jordan. West Jordan, yeah. okay. And so we're kind of, where, as we usually do, where, where were you born, and where, how did you get started in life? I was uh, born in Kansas City you area. Were. Okay. Kansas City, and just briefly, uh, my dad was out there for a job, and yep. then quickly went back to California. Spent the first 12 years of my life in California. Okay. And then we did some state hopping, went up to Montana for nine months, Houston, Texas oh, for right. three years. These went, are all job transfers yeah. and stuff? Well, and... yeah, just my dad was an electrical engineer, job shopper, and went to oh. where the job was, started yeah. up, and then went to go <laughs> find another one. Yeah. So uh, after Texas, went to Arizona, Tempe, Arizona, for a couple years, and then I went back to California, and that's where I went into Biola University. Oh. And my dad took another job out in California, and so the family moved back to Southern California, San Diego area. Okay. And uh, then I moved up here in 96. Okay, well, we're going to back yeah. up yeah. just a little bit, because <laughs> okay. there's some interesting stories at the beginning of your life. But um, your, your family, were they uh, Mormon or Christian? No, or I was they? raised in a Christian family. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we knew that, and and now that uh, anyway, so so you were uh, raised Christian and got yeah, an experience when you were pretty young. Tell us about that. Well, my my dad is uh, very evangelical. He's had a big is impact he? on my life. Uh, he he loves to share the Lord with anybody, and uh, so he thought it would be a good time when I was about four or five years old to call me into his room and. <laughs> evangelized me and asked me if I wanted to go to heaven or if I wanted to go to hell. <laughs> and I said, well, I think I'd want to go to heaven, I right? Those are my so, two choices. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he said, well, you need to ask Jesus to come into your life and you need to follow him for the rest of your life. And I, so he led me in a prayer to receive Christ and I've been living for him ever since. Uh, had you been going to church regularly? Your folks went oh, yeah. on Sundays yeah, and we, stuff? And... Yeah, uh, mostly evangelical free as a kid. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then in college, uh, well, actually, uh, when we went to Montana and uh, Texas, the Bible church um, churches. Yeah. And uh, then in Arizona, we went to a community church. Wow. And then when I went out to Biola, I started getting involved in Calvary Chapel. Well, and when you accepted Jesus, as you say, in a, as a young age, yeah. what did that mean to you? Uh, I mean, did you have a sense of who Jesus was? And Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it wasn't completely new to me. Yeah. It wasn't out of left field. My dad would do a good job at always at night leading us in prayer and he my dad's a great storyteller and mm -hmm. so he would tell these stories uh, I remember of these little lambs uh, and he'd tell other stories too but primarily he would tell stories of little lambs and he would uh, paraphrase Psalm 23 Oh, yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, from the perspective of these little lambs called oh. Jimmy and Billy. <laughs> and uh, so, so did these you have are, brothers and sisters? Yeah, I had four four younger brothers, or three younger brothers. I'm the oldest of four. Oh, yeah. Of, so four brothers. Yeah. And did, did he share these stories with the, oh, yeah. all you boys? Yeah. So, so I mean, we were, we were raised to love Jesus and make him famous. We wanted everybody else to know about Jesus and uh, that's really remarkable it's it, it is quite remarkable and all the brothers uh, even to this day 
are living for the Lord. Really? And so it's quite unusual. <laughs> it it is. really is it to is. find a family that has always been focused on serving the Lord and making him famous. And I, I, I think uh, I've had a lot of good consistency from my parents. Sure. What, and what an example they they've, were. Right? They've been a great example. My, my dad has, uh, I mean, I remember him coming home from work and telling us stories about <laughs> how he would share the Lord with people at work. <laughs> And he would uh, spend like once a week with his church going door to door really? and talking to people about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so he had, he was quite, I mean, God had, had done a real change in his heart before I was even born. And he has told his testimony numerous times. I, I could probably give it to you right now, <laughs> by heart. but yeah, by heart. So I've heard the story uh, so much about how God came into his life, and he was raised in a Christian family, but he uh, was just got disillusioned with uh, the church and and Christianity and, and Christ because of all the hip, hypocrisy he would see in the hmm. church, and um, so he he had a. He got into drugs and drinking, and, oh and God just really got a hold of his life <laughs> and gave him a 180. Yeah. And, uh, it, and he, he has never been the same since. And he was able to share that yeah, and he, enthusiasm with yes. your kids. And, I mean, it was yeah. very real to him. Yeah. Uh, and, and so he shared that with everybody, including us boys, yeah. and of course we wanted to grow up and be like dad. Sure. We grow up. Now we, I mean, there, we all do different things <laughs> as brothers. Right. Um, I'm a professional missionary. Right. But I have a brother who's a web developer. I have another brother who is a missionary over in Serbia. Oh my. And he's a missionary, a pastor, humanitarian aid worker over there. And he wants to That's win true. a lot of Serbians to the Lord. Wow. And then I have a brother who is an electrical engineer, but he's also a seminary graduate, okay. uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. Yeah. And so uh, we all, no matter if we're in professional ministry or not, we want to make the Lord famous yeah. in, in whatever area. Well, I'm sure Dad's real us proud and thrilled with what you've accomplished. Yeah. So when, you also had a little experience with Mormon missionaries, though, at about age seven or eight. Yeah, sure and, that and, that, uh, and that I have, have to bring my mom into it. Okay. When they knocked at the door. I was a real young kid. My mom opened the door, and here two guys in white shirts and ties. Yeah. And I'm standing there looking at these guys, and my mom very politely says, well, Thank you, but we're not interested, and just shuts the door on him. And I said, "Mom, what was this all about?" She says, "Oh, those are Mormon missionaries, and they think you've got to get to heaven by your own good works." And I said, "No, they really believe that. How could anybody believe that? That's that's crazy." Yeah. And so I went down the street chasing these Mormon missionaries down, and I hid behind the bushes of my buddy's place. And as they were walking up the driveway, I jumped out of the bushes. I said, you can't get to heaven by your own good works. And they very politely pulled a knee and opened the Bible, probably the James 2 passage, yeah. faith that works is dead. I can't remember quite well, but I nodded my head and ran home afterwards, and that was the beginning of my ministry to Mormons right there. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, amazing. Yes, I've, I've never forgotten that, but it wasn't until about seven years or so later in high school, my uncle was pastoring a church in Midway City, California, next to Westminster. Hmm. We were in Houston, and he invited me to come out and be a part of what was called a summer servants ministry in which they would do different things during the summer. We'd go down to Mexico, help out in the orphanages youth and the groups? churches. Was now. it youth groups Yeah, it was, it was a high school youth group Yeah, from freshmen to seniors, okay. about 40 of us around there, 40, wow. 50 of us. 
and uh, it was kind of like a Christian boot camp. <laughs> um, they'd get us up early in the morning and we'd have to go run around the track at the local uh, junior college wow. and we'd have to memorize verses, <laughs> epistles, uh, before we could even eat. Did you like that? Or was uh, it yeah, I loved as, it. As a young kid? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and a, you're in high school age. Yeah. yeah. And a big part of it was sharing our faith yeah. and, and doing evangelism. We'd do evangelism uh, in Mexico and on, on the beach in, in California. And, you know, well, one of the weeks was coming up to Utah. Oh. And I was uh, trained. All, all of us were trained by a guy named Kurt Van Gordon with the Utah Gospel Mission, which is a part of Jude 3 Missions. Mm. And he was used to work with the original Bible Answer Man, Walter Martin. Oh, yeah. And had a big part to play in putting together the Kingdom of the Cults, a famous that famous textbook. Yeah, yeah. And so the youth pastor met him at Talbot School of Theology and invited him to come and train the youth group in as far as the differences between Mormonism and Christianity. And so we that's when I really began to understand what Mormonism was all about. And it wasn't that we'd have books and we'd have to have, pass a test on basic understanding of Mormonism. Now, was this before you came to Utah yes. then? So you yeah. kind of prepared to... Yes, they prepared us and then they... Now, had you met other Mormons in the meantime between your age, between, between the missionary experience and then this high school uh, thing? No, I mean, not really. Not really, okay. Yeah, I mean, I heard about them, yeah. but and saw the nice commercials they put on. So TV, what kind of things were you learning there in before to prep and prep to come here to Utah? Uh, the first book that the first book that we read was Marv Cowan's book, Mormon Claims Answer. Oh yeah. And then we also read Floyd McKelvin's book, The Mormon Illusion, <laughs> which was I think then I think it was part of God's Word, Final and Fallible and Forever. Mm -hmm. And so we would we'd read these books and which was good, but, you know, book knowledge only goes so far. Right, right. But they put us in a bus, and we came up to Utah County. They kicked oh, did us you out. Really? Utah County. And we started returning the favor of the Mormon missionaries, right? We started Just knocking, knocking on, on the doors. doors, and we'd go to BYU, going all talk over the, the campus, talk stuff. to the students. We'd go around Temple Square, in Temple Square, outside Temple Square. And uh, we would just be all over the place sharing our faith with Mormons. And I just, I fell in love with it. I couldn't get enough of it. And we would be out. What was your approach in, when you were in high school? I mean, that, you're so young, really, still, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was constantly changing. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time, it was back when the Godmakers first came out. Oh, yeah back in 82, I think it was, no, 80, 83, it was a year after I started, 16 years old, I, I went to this one house, I was carrying around a bag and it had the VH cop, VHS copy of the Godmakers, and I asked them, hey, I got this new film on Mormonism, would you be interested in watching it? <laughs> they said, ah, sure, come on in. Oh my goodness. So, sometime in to the movie, one of the guys gets up and he goes and makes a call in the kitchen, comes back, watches the rest of the movie. Well, before the end of the movie, we get this, open the door, here's the bishop. <laughs> and I was with this other girl who was my partner, and after the movie, this bishop proceeds to just chew us up and spit <laughs> us out, and it was just... Miserable. Not pretty. <laughs> uh, the girl that I, who was my partner, she was in tears. Oh dear. And the lady of the home came up to me and shook my hand and said, "Thank you for coming over and strengthening my testimony of my church." Yeah. yeah. And I just felt like a complete failure, <laughs> you know. And it was, but right after that, immediately after that, we all got together and had dinner, and then the group wanted to go to. 
the old Provo Tabernacle for a tour and uh, I chose to stay back and just go out and do some more door to door Knocking, yeah. by myself. I mean, I'm just telling you what a glutton for punishment I was. <laughs> but I really wanted to force myself into the situation and trust the Lord that he was going to make me a better evangelist dis despite all the headaches involved. I wanted to get good at learning the Mormon language and being able to push the right buttons so that I could challenge Mormons and bring them so you've just really had the, this heart for I, I, well for this religion I you know to be honest with you Earl at first I didn't have much of a love for the Mormon people uh -huh. I just wanted to one-up them <laughs> and yeah. not only that but I was just really fascinated by how do you guys believe all this crazy stuff? It just makes absolutely no sense to me growing up in a traditional Christian family about all this business about you becoming gods and there was a God before God and so on and so on. Yeah, and it's, pretty, it's a pretty amazing doctrine. Isn't and it? I, mean, I mean, it was just so, my, it was so intriguing yeah. is what it was. Yeah. I couldn't get enough of it. I would, so I would come up and spend varying amounts of, my summertime up here. It's get up in the morning, get out about nine o'clock or so, spend all day long getting into these real intense dialogues with Mormons, just door to door, and come back. At the end of the day, my head was just <laughs> throbbing from these real intense conversations. And so at first, like I said, it was just I was just intrigued, but I did eventually develop a real love for the Mormon people. And I wanted, I, I just, I really wanted them to know God. I wanted them to know what Jesus had taught in his word. What he did for us. And what he and, had yeah, done that, for us. And, yeah, and, the, and the peace that we have that Mormons are just breaking their back to get into the celestial kingdom, this burden that is placed on them. And I wanted them to know the good news of what Christ has to offer them. Well, as somebody yeah. who comes through that, has come through that process, I appreciate that enthusiasm. Yeah. I really do because it, uh, it's tough. And yeah. what did you find in your youth that was effective in talking to them or at least creating conversation? Maybe your approach is different now, but... Yeah, it's quite a bit different yeah. now, as you saw from the intro yeah. <laughs> sign, right? But, uh, I, I mean, back then it was... Uh, it's so hard to remember. It was so long ago, but I, I think we would do surveys mm. of asking uh, people what they believed. I, I, we also would uh, ask Mormons uh, to tell us if they would have time, tell us about their faith and mm. that we're up here, we'd just be very honest and say yeah. that we are Christian missionaries up here and we are learning, because we really were learning right. the Mormon faith and we're curious as to what Mormonism is really all about and we would like people to be able to really share what Mormonism was really and all they were about. they willing to do that, tell you what they... Yeah, a lot of times. Faith, I mean, we, uh, Yeah. But we got kicked I, out of... <laughs> yeah, we got kicked out a lot of... I mean, Mormon missionaries can sympathize with this, but a lot of people didn't want to hear. Right. Uh, I remember one guy going to his place, I believe this was uh, somewhere in Utah County, and he threatened us with a gun. Oh, dear. He had to get off his property, or he'd get his gun. And, and so, okay, we... <laughs> Have so you we got out there, got out pretty quickly, you know. Yeah. I wonder if he had any missionaries that he'd send out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I, I I do remember that it was it was kind of a threatening situation. I've been in all sorts of threatening situations, but uh, the so the door to door and approaching people up at, at BYU was primarily how I got going in my outreach to to Mormons and. And then I, over the years, began to have a real 
desire to to get the word out more to Mormons that are passing me by and not giving me any uh, time of day. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and so I I started carrying signs to advertise different websites, and mm -hmm. and 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 then from there it was. Also, I wanted to get the word out more, so I, I started preaching when crowds would develop, you yeah. know. And, and so my ministry has been evolving quite a bit over the years. Well, right after high school, then, you say you go to Biola? Yes. Is that where you started Biola, going? Biola, and that was close to, close to home there, and you were in California. Yeah, yeah. And you end up with several degrees actually tell us that you I mean you've ended up with several theology degrees well the point philosophy. the point was i never wanted to be a great academician and, and be i mean i did teach philosophy uh in theology and, and in graduate school a christian graduate school in anaheim i i've taught at uh was local that churches no that was at simon greenleaf university oh. which is now trinity international university mm. um and i i've i've taught at rio salado community college in tempe arizona online as a philosophy instructor for them but i ne i never really wanted to be a great <laughs> philosophy professor that it, it was always about i wanted to as first peter 315 it says be ready always to give a reason an answer for the hope that you have with gentleness and respect and i always wanted to be a good apologist for the christian faith and particularly with the mormon people because I developed this love for Mormons. I wanted to see them know the well, God of the Bible. And well, now, you ended up with a couple of master's degrees in, from Biola and, and Talbot or yeah, I, I, San Diego State, I, I think. Yes, and so I and now did... Now, were these, these Christian-related Yeah, I, and, my undergrad was in biblical studies. Okay. And I just wanted to get out of there as fast as I could and come back up to Utah. Well, one of the guys that was uh, doing an internship at C the Christian Research Institute we became friends with and, and and he said look Rob if you wanted to you could go into the graduate program in the Talbot School of Theology here and with all your carryover as an undergrad you could get in and out in a year if you wanted to mm. with a master's Sounds in theological good. studies so Sounds I said good. well okay I'll, 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 I'll do that yeah. I'll postpone coming up to Utah so when I got into Talbot School of Theology, that's kind of when I got hooked on education. My mm -hmm. first apologetics professor named John Coe, he really got me hooked. In, he, was, he got his PhD at UC Irvine there. And he trained us in apologetics and defending the faith, and then he encouraged me to go to Palomar College after that first year of, I didn't have a social life that year. It was just all doing school to get out in yeah. a year. And then after that, I went to Palomar College, community college for a year, just to do credit, no credit, to see if I really wanted to pursue philosophy. And I did. And so after that, I went to San Diego State for another graduate degree in philosophy there. So during that time, I got very confused. What is this I'm getting into yeah. and at that time J.P. Moreland who is a very well respected Christian philosopher apologist had just come from Liberty University to start his program in philosophy religion and ethics mm. at Talbot so I'd start coming up to sit in on his classes uh, every couple of weeks or so just to get straightened out from what I was getting down to San Diego State <laughs> And so we became good friends. He invited me to come into his program there. And so I finished that program about a year and a half. And so I was done with uh, my graduate degrees in 93. Uh, well, let, me, let me ask real quick, because we're just okay. about out of time for this episode. All right. Jesus mm -hmm. has been such an important part of your life it sounds like and the, and really the hope that we have within us is is because of what he did for us yes has that uh, were you able to maintain that through your education and your yeah, studies absolutely. and everything and yeah i mean i i mean this is the whole reason for this 
enthusiasm yes. and excitement that you have to share what's really the good news, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, C.S. Lewis is very famous for making a quote that said, good philosophy must exist if for no other reason to answer bad philosophy. <laughs> and there's a whole there's lot a, of bad a, philosophy out there. Out. And so because of that, I wanted to be a good philosopher for the kingdom of, of God. Of God. And I wanted to give people good reasons to believe the Christian faith. And yeah. so that's why I pursued it. I realized just as when I was out going door to door and got just into a lot of frustrating conversations, that the same thing was going to happen to me in graduate school. I was going to have to take my lumps and I was going to have to get used to it. And I was going to have to trust God yeah. to be a good thinker, a good apologist. Did Christian your faith, faith in the Bible continue? Was it always oh, yeah. strong? Too? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I was surrounded by good Christian thinkers yeah. that would encourage me, that would give me good answers for faith. And that kept me going. Was yeah. it frustrating to, to encourage Mormons to read the Bible? And, and you'd finally learn very quickly, I'm sure, that they don't even know what the what the Bible's about? Yeah, they, well, they don't know what the Bible is about, and they've got and they don't the, trust it. And they don't trust it. No. First Nephi thirteen in the Book of Mormon says that there's all these plain and precious truths that have been taken out by the great abominable church, and so they have this drilled into their heads that they can't really even trust the Bible. If you can't trust the Bible, why even bother re spending time studying mm -hmm. and reading it? You know, and so this is where I am called to give good reasons why you can trust the Bible. I think God has such a humor to, to throw at us the Dead Sea Scrolls, for example. Sure. Some of the other evidences that keep coming up constantly yeah. Supporting the Bible. That's right. As as a as as something that's yeah, trustworthy. And then you contrast that with well, what CNN report have we got for the Book of Mormon? Right. You know, and we're still waiting on it. Right. I mean, every year you can Google top ten biblical archaeology discoveries Discovery. for that year, yeah. and it's amazing. Yeah. What all these findings we got for the Bible, yet we have nothing for nothing. the New World archaeology of the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And they want to say that somehow this is the fullness of the everlasting gospel, and this is really where you ought to put your trust, and don't uh, trust the Bible because it's been through all these translations and transmissions, and you just can't trust it. And like the phone game, you know, I whisper right. something in your right. ear, you whisper something in Dorothy's ear, That's and it gets they... around, and it comes back, and it's complete. It's just God yeah. has supernaturally preserved his word, and we've got a lot of good reasons to believe promise. that yeah. and not the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And Mormons need to know this. Yeah. But well, they have been brainwashed to think that, the Bible can't be trusted. Well, it's, it's so hard for me now to accept what I did for so many years, 65 years. I believe that Book of Mormon was true, and I couldn't trust the Bible. And I just... Anyway, believe it or not, we're out of time. We're going to do this a, a little bit more because there's some more interesting stuff to cover. And so thanks Sounds for good. joining us, and we'll see you next time. All right. <laughs> thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time, too.